Hey guys, today we are trying another inexpensive tool to expand the capabilities of the Sony ZV-1. This inexpensive macro lens adapter kit. We are going to cover a quick overview of the macro lens kit, magnification testing and examples, key benefits and drawbacks of the lenses, practical tips for shooting the best macro footage, and stick around until the end for my overall conclusions and recommendations. But first, Let's demonstrate how macro shots can make things more interesting. See this eye? Pretty boring, right? Standard eye. But if you get a super close macro shot like this, then there's a lot more interesting stuff to see. So let's talk basics. This is a 52mm macro filter kit which fits the same 52mm adapter I use to attach variable ND and wide angle lens adapters to my Sony ZV-1. More info on that adapter in my wide angle lens vid linked in the description. You get four macro filters which go up in order of increasing magnification. We get plus one, plus two, plus four, and plus 10. These can be used individually or in any combination where you attach the higher number after the lower number. So you could use plus one and plus four, plus four and plus 10, so on and so forth. For my taste, the true macro shots are the ones you can achieve when you stack all the filters together from plus one all the way through to plus 10, like this. Let's go to the magnification test so I can show you how things look. To demonstrate the effect of adding each adapter, I'm showing you some freeze frames of different subjects in order of higher and higher magnification as we add each adapter in sequence. We then switch to a split screen view and roll video so you can get a quick sense of the depth of field difference as we add each adapter from plus one through to plus 10. First observation, the ZV-1 with no adapter does a surprisingly solid job Definitely usable for very close close-ups and maybe a bit of macro video already. The plus one and plus two macro filters give a fairly modest increase in magnification. When we add the plus four, things become much more significant and noticeable. And once we add the plus 10 on top, then we're getting truly into macro territory where it's substantially different from the camera on its own. With those last examples of rain on my window, I also zoomed in as far as possible with the full adapter kit plus one through to plus 10 attached to give you a sense of the maximum possible magnification. Lastly, I'm showing you the ZV-1 with no adapter kit versus the full plus 10 kit for each subject to contrast the extremes of magnification that you can achieve. For reference, most of that test footage at the beginning was using all of the macro adapters stacked together from plus one through to plus 10 and various levels of zoom. Now onto benefits. One, the biggest benefit is clearly the potential for awesome shots you could not otherwise achieve. The ZV-1 is quite macro capable to begin with, but I never would have been able to achieve some of those shots where you see the fuzz of a bumblebee. Is it, is it fuzz or fur? Those tiny water bug creatures, or any of those really cool super close-ups in that intro montage. And if we learned anything from 1980s movies, it's that montage equals good. Two, you get to expand the capabilities of your ZV-1 at a very modest price, especially compared to buying a dedicated macro lens for an interchangeable lens camera. Three, 
You get some customization potential and flexibility by having four filters that you can mix, match and adapt to the shooting situation in front of you. I confess, I normally stack all of the adapters together because I want that max magnification and the biggest contrast from what our eyes normally see, but less extreme combos can still be really useful. Four, the adapters are small and light, easily fitting in a pocket or small camera bag. That means you can always react to cool shooting opportunities. Like when I got this shot of grass in 480 frames per second super slow-mo because the wind suddenly kicked up when I was out for a walk. If you want to know more about the awesome super slow-mo capabilities of the ZV-1, check out my tutorial and test footage in the description. And number five, the last noteworthy benefit is also kind of double-sided. With the macro lens filters attached, focal depth becomes noticeably shallow. This can nicely emphasize the beautiful blurry background bokeh, like in our opening shot here. But that focal depth brings us to our drawbacks. Number one, the shallow focus and significant magnification makes it much more difficult to get consistent focus. Plus, small movements by you or your subject can easily throw things out of focus. That makes autofocus harder to use and the learning curve for effective use of manual focus much steeper because your margin for error becomes quite small. Two, magnification increases camera shake. Even tiny movements are exaggerated, making smooth shots that much harder to achieve. So you'll need a combination of technique, gear, and lateral thinking to get smooth footage and the best results. Three, the other downside of significant magnification and shallow focus is you need to get physically very close to your subject. With the full adapter setup from plus one through to plus 10, you need to be almost touching your subject. This can be awkward to achieve or limit some of the shots you can capture, especially if the subject is moving, like those awkward insects and bugs I just about managed to get. Before we get to my tips for good macro footage and my conclusions, thank you for watching the video so far. If you end up finding the video enjoyable or useful, then please consider dropping a like. If you like ZV-1 tech or creative content, then please consider subscribing to the channel for more of all of that good stuff. And of course, if you have any questions or thoughts, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. So what do I recommend to get the best footage with this little macro lens kit? One, consider using manual focus. Autofocus can still be effective with the macro lens kit, but I found overall shooting was easier with manual focus once I did a bit of practice and got used to what my focal lengths were compared to my subject. Two, Shoot at 60 or 120 frames per second where possible. If we assume our project is 24 frames per second, shooting at 60 lets us slow down to 40%. Shooting at 120 lets us slow down to 20% of the original speed. That slowing down can improve your macro footage, both by smoothing out movements and camera shake, and by giving the audience more time to digest the tiny details that the lenses allow you to capture. Three, always shoot with active stabilization turned on. This can help a little bit with camera movement and shake, but more importantly, with no stabilization turned on, you can get vignetting around the edge of the frame. Having active stabilization enabled removes this entirely. If you can use other stabilization options, then definitely do so. The ZV-1 and the full macro adapter kit will balance on the Xeon Crane M2. Video in the description on how to set up the ZV-1 with that gimbal. You could also use Catalyst Brow's gyroscopic stabilization to help stabilize footage shot at 60 frames per second and lower. Full guide to Catalyst linked in the description. So now our conclusions and do I recommend this little macro lens kit? My answer depends on your shooting style and needs. If you like to just run and gun with the ZV-1, leave everything on auto and enjoy the great results the camera can deliver in lots of situations like that. This could be quite a high maintenance accessory for you. It could still be worthwhile if you like the kinds of macro shots that you've seen here, but it might require you to persevere a little bit with a learning curve or change of approach to get the best out of it. If you're like me and you love learning how to get the most out of your gear, what all of the settings and little manual control tweaks can do, then this macro adapter kit may well appeal more. It gives you some unique and different capabilities for a pretty inexpensive price. And if you learn to work around the limitations can give you some really cool results. I'm intending to use the macro kit for product videography and super close up B-roll. And those two uses on their own justify the price for me. Whichever kind of shooter you are, I would only recommend this as a specific use and situational kind of accessory. It is not going to compete with a dedicated macro lens on an interchangeable lens camera. So bear that in mind. But given the benefits, drawbacks and price, 
it's a tool that I'm happy to have in my creative arsenal, and it could be a great option for you as well. Which brings us to the end of things for today. Thank you so much for watching, and especially for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, then a like, subscribe, comment, or share would be amazing and massively appreciated. So, until next time, take it easy.